بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله على النبي الأمي برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us tawfiq to benefit from these moments we have to learn more about our beautiful deen about the blessed life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the blessed lives of the ashab the sahaba the great grand sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam through whom deen reached us it was them who narrated to us the incidents and the, 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 the happenings in the blessed life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we are in this month Rajab and generally we always remember an incident of the seerah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because us as believers we should always be connected to the beautiful life of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and one interesting incident that took place in Allah's Nabi's life was when Allah took him on this grand journey it was a journey through which Allah honored his beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and this journey had two legs, two parts to it. The one part of the journey is referred to as Isra. And Allah Ta'ala mentions this in Surah Isra. Subhanallahi Asra. That's the first part of the journey. Asra, Yusri, Isra. Allah sent His Nabi, took His Nabi on this night nocturnal journey. Physically, Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was taken. That's the first part of the journey. The second part of the journey is referred to as Al-Mi'raj. Mi'raj is a tool to go upward, to climb. Araja, Mi'raj. Something to climb up in a staircase motion. That is Uruj and Mi'raj. The tool through which one goes up is Mi'raj. That's the second part of the journey. And that is mentioned in Surah Wal-Najmi Ida Hawa. So this part is mentioned in this chapter of the Quran. There's so many aspects to this journey, so many lessons in this journey, so many incidents that took place during this journey. There are so many Sahaba radiyallahu anhum who narrate the happenings of this journey. And there are so many lessons behind this journey. What a great journey. It was a speciality of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Allah highlights this journey in his kalam. But one Sahabiya, because we want to learn more about the Sahaba radiyallahu anhum as well, and even those Sahaba that we don't take their names at times. Now and again we try and bring alive the names of those Sahaba. Because every Sahabi is special. One Sahabi, or should I say Sahabiya, radiallahu anha, who we should know because of this journey. And one of those who narrated the, the event of this journey was none other than the cousin of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa the daughter of his uncle Abu Talib. She was none other than Ummu Hani radiallahu anha. Her name, according to different reports, the preferable view regarding her name was Fakhita. But she was commonly known by the title appellation Ummu Hani. This Sahabiya radiallahu anha, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam grew up in Abu Talib's home. Abu Talib took care of him after the demise of the, the grandfather of Janabi Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So Allah's Habib grew up in front of Abu Talib and Abu Talib's wife, Hazrat Fatima binti Asad radiallahu anha. And all Abu Talib's children were close to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa The eldest being Talib, then being Aqil, who was born interestingly 10 years later, then Jafar, then Ali, Hazrat Ali radiallahu anhum. And then in that he had two daughters, one was Jumana and the other was Fakhita Ummuhani radiallahu anhum. Now, all the children of Abu Talib embraced Islam. Just there's not much information about, about, about Talib. But the others, there is much detailed information regarding them. As far as Fakhita Ummu Hane is concerned, she was a child in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when she reached the age of puberty and she reached the age of marriage, marriageable age, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did propose to her. But just before that, or at that time, a man by the name of Hubayra bin Wahab, who comes from the Banu Makhzum family, he proposed for Fakhita Umm Muhani. And Abu Talib, on that occasion, gave his daughter to Hubayra. Anyway, afterwards, Allah's Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked his uncle, Oh my uncle, Zawajta Hubayra wa taraktani. Now, historically, this seems to be before the advent of Nubuwa. You got to Hubeira, you gave Hubeira your daughter and you left me. 
Abu Talib responded that, you know, we already have in-law relations with the Banu Makhzum, and I couldn't tell them no. As for you, O Muhammad, وسلم, you mine. That's why I can tell you no. I can't tell the Banu Makhzum no. And we also have in-law relations with them, and they have been very respectful to us. That's why I have to give Ubayah. Anyway, Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam obviously didn't marry Fakhita Ummu Hani. And we learn something from here. That Allah's Nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam was happy with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But one very important lesson. Sometimes you want something in life. But Allah ta'ala doesn't give you that specific thing. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will just give you better. Because Allah does what's best for us. And whatever happens in life, there is wisdom in it. And we learn a very important lesson that you and I might go through in life. A person wanted something. He wanted a certain job. He wanted a certain wife. He wanted a certain post. Allah Ta'ala didn't give him that. Definitely there is wisdom in not having that. There's, there's wisdom in not having that specific thing because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala knows best. So we shouldn't actually hanker behind something that we wanted and we didn't get and we feel bad about it and then it hinders us from many, many other things. There's a beautiful dua of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Oh Allah. And this was obviously a, a dua which teaches the ummah something very important. That Allah, there's certain things we ask you and you didn't give us. Oh Allah, from there we save lots of time. Allah, enable me to utilize that time in your pleasure for your sake. And then there's another beautiful dua of the pious. اللهم لا تفتني في طلب ما لم تقدره وما قدرته لي فاجعله سهلا لي هو الله do not trial me in, uh, in making me chase behind something you didn't decree for me and what you decreed for me my Allah make easy for me to acquire Allah give us perfect to see Allah's wisdom in everything and mainly to be happy with Allah 